This is third and last part of conduction. Here we will be learning about insulation, application of insulation in plane walls, application of insulation on cylinders and spheres, and also plane wall with uniform heat generation. Now let's start with insulation. We all know what insulation is. Suppose we have a copper wire and current is flowing in it. Now we insulate the wire with an insulator so that a user cannot get electric shock. Now insulation has this purpose also, but it has another purpose, which is the main purpose. It is for varying the heat transfer rate. Sometimes it reduces the heat transfer rate, but in some cases insulation also increases the heat transfer rate. So the main purpose of insulation is to vary, is to change, is to increase or decrease the heat transfer rate. Now let's see what insulation do in a plane wall. We all know heat transfer equation of plane wall. We write it as T2 minus T1 by L by K. I am writing it in this form because I have to show you thermal resistance. This is the thermal resistance RTH. Now you can directly observe the relation between RTH and length L by K. Now what happens here, you can observe that as we are increasing the thickness sorry this is the thickness of the wall not length so as i am increasing the thickness of the wall thermal resistance is also increasing if thermal resistance is increasing then heat transfer will be decreasing suppose this is a plane wall having thickness l now heat is flowing from this side having thermal conductivity k and if we talk about area this is the area which is perpendicular to it now again if I increase this length L in this wall and heat is traveling from this side, now what will happen? Heat transfer rate will be minimum here. Why? Because I have increased the length. So by increasing the length, we increase the thermal resistance of this wall. So in case of plane wall, insulation always reduces the heat transfer because this is a plane wall. If I add more insulation to it like this, then it will increase the thickness of this plane wall. So if thickness will increase, then resistance will also increase. If resistance will increase, then heat transfer will decrease. So this is the case when we talk about plane walls. But this is not the case when we talk about cylinder and spheres. We have a different case in cylinder and spheres. Let's study about that. Next topic is application of insulation on cylinders. Just observe the image. Now this dark line represents our tube having outer radius R1. Now I have added insulating material. This insulating material shown by red lines. Now after adding insulating material, the radius of total insulator becomes R2. Now this is our R2. Now this insulating material have a thermal conductivity K outside blue envelope which you can see outside is our air enveloping this whole cylinder air is at temperature ta having heat transfer coefficient as h watt per meter square kelvin it is having some length l tube is having some length l now i am representing this in electrical resistance form before that i need to assign some temperatures this temperature is t1 outside a tube and this temperature is T2 at a surface of insulator. Now just observe the resistances. This is our temperature T1 just outside the tube. And just outside tube, we are getting a resistance by insulator. So we, I'm writing it as R insulation. And at surface of insulation, temperature is T2. After that, air is giving some resistance air is providing some resistance so i am writing it as r convection because it is due to convection and outside temperature of air is ta now we all know we all know about heat transfer equation in case of cylinder we write it as q is equal to t1 minus ta that is internal minus external temperature upon ln by r2 by r1 ln r2 by r1 by 2 pi kl now this term shows resistance offered by insulation that is here in resistance heat transfer will take place due to conduction because we have added the material in it so here heat is transferring due to conduction and 
here heat will transfer to convection so we will write convection term generally the formula is 1 by ha for convective resistance so we write it as 1 by h 2 pi r h is area of cylinder so here it will be 2 pi r2 into l from this equation it can be seen that if we increase the radius of insulation that is if we have this tube now i have added some insulating material outside this is the radius r2 of insulating material this was our r1 outside radius of tube now if i am increasing this r2 that is radius of insulating material i am adding more insulation so radius will increase now if i am increasing r2 now what will happen to this term this term will also increase now this resistance is increasing if this resistance is increasing then q will decrease but in case of this term what happens if i increase r2 here then this whole term will decrease now if both if all this term will decrease then what happen q will increase now our heat transfer rate will it will be increasing now here you are seeing two effects are dominating first it is leading to decrease of heat transfer and it is making heat transfer to increase so this is the case why we observe heat transfer rate increase or decrease in cylinder around its critical point now but this is not in the case of plane wall when we talk about plane wall there is only conduction part dominating so heat transfer rate decreases if we increase the thickness but here there are two cases so heat transfer rate depends on which predominates let us draw a graph between heat transfer rate and radius of insulation now we can observe that radius of insulation if we increase the radius of insulation up to certain point heat transfer rate increases and after that point it decreases now the point where heat transfer rate is maximum we call that rc that is critical radius of insulation here heat transfer rate is maximum after this point heat transfer rate decreases now why this happens you have seen the term 1 by h 2 pi r 2 l in the equation which i have shown before now what happens in this when i am increasing this r2 this whole term is decreasing so here heat transfer rate is increasing so this term is dominating in this side so that's why due to its domination this heat transfer rate is increasing now here logarithmic term is dominating that's why heat transfer rate is decreasing so it depends which part dominates so we have found that at critical radius of insulation heat transfer rate is maximum now we have to find this point what is the value of this critical radius of insulation for that what we do we differentiate the heat with respect to radius and we equate it to zero now we can find the value of r2 that is rc critical radius of insulation by differentiating it so i am directly differentiating the resistance terms equal to 0 after you will differentiate this uh, you will get term r2 is equal to k by h and this is our rc we call it critical radius of insulation so this is the final expression now we will study important aspects of critical radius of insulation now first aspect is that when we increase the thickness of insulation conduction resistance that is conductive resistance it increases logarithmically we have seen the logarithmic term ln r2 by r1 by 2 pi kl so if i am increasing the r2 this whole term is increasing and q is decreasing now second term was 1 by h 2 pi r2 l now if i am increasing the r2 this whole term is decreasing and q is increasing now due to this what happens these both these total resistance decreases uh, due to conductive resistance and convective resistance here conductive resistance increases logarithmically and convective decreases linearly as due to this total resistance first decrease and it attains a minimum value and then increases now we have seen in the in the graph that first q increase now if q is increasing then this shows that total resistance is decreasing that's why heat is increasing up to certain point 
and after this point resistance is increasing that's why heat is decreasing that is heat transfer rate is decreasing this was our first aspect second aspect is that critical radius is independent of pipe radius we have seen in the formula that rc comes out to be k by h now we have seen that critical radius is independent of pipe radius it is only depending on thermal conductivity of insulation and it is depending on h which is being exposed to surface of insulation now third aspect is that if we want insulation to reduce the heat transfer if we want that insulation has to reduce the heat transfer if i am designing a material so that it is uh, reducing the heat transfer then i have to check critical areas of insulation i have to vary our thickness of insulation according to this and another aspect is that heat transfer will always reduce on application of insulation of wall if i am increasing the insulation of wall it will always decrease same is the case when we talk about critical thickness of insulation in case of spares just observe this image red line shows the insulation and this is spear having radius r1 when we insulate the spear the radius becomes r2 h is heat transfer coefficient of air insulation is having some thermal conductivity k0 let at surface of spear temperature be t1 and at surface of insulation temperature be t2 now heat equation can be written as t1 minus t2 by r2 minus r1 by 4 pi k0 r1 r2 now here this is conductive resistance and we will write another term for convective resistance which is 1 by ha that is 4 pi r2 square into h this is convective resistance now we can same explain this case like cylinder that here also at critical radius of insulation due to convective part heat transfer rate increases and due to this conductive part heat transfer rate decreases the same is the case so here what we will do we will directly find out our value of rc for finding that we will differentiate q with respect to r2 so we will write dq by dr2 is equal to zero now if we differentiate this term we will get final term as r2 is equal to 2k0 by h is equal to rc so this is our final expression for critical thickness of insulation in case of spears next topic is plane wall with uniform heat generation now see the image in x we have shown the thickness of the wall and in y we have shown the temperature now here is our origin l is total thickness of the wall this is our plane wall and red stripe is our element we have taken an element which is at a distance x from origin and it is having some thickness dx we are talking about heat generation so here is a heat generation point inside i am writing it as qg now some heat is supplying from this part so i am showing this with qx this is the heat which is going inside and heat which will come outside will be qx plus dx because of this internal heat generation so we can derive the equation using fourier's law using all these terms and using fourier's law as basics as using fourier's law that is minus k dt by dt by dx we can use that equation and derive the whole equation but i am using general heat equation for that which i have shown you in conduction video part one that was del 2 t bar del x square plus del 2 t bar del y square plus del 2 t bar del z square plus q g by k is equal to zero so here you are seeing that one upon alpha del t over del tau is missing so it is missing because we are talking about steady state that's why it becomes zero also you can observe that we are talking about heat in x direction so y and z coordinates get cancelled so 
our equation becomes del ut by del x square plus qg by k is equal to zero. For getting the value of temperature, we can integrate the equation twice. So I'm integrating it first once. I will get del t by del x plus qg by k into x plus c1 is equal to zero. Again, if I integrate it, it becomes t plus qg x square by 2k plus c1x plus c2 is equal to zero. Now we can write t as minus qg by 2k x square plus c1x plus c2. So this is our expression. Now just see here, this is wall temperature at point one on wall and this is our outside wall part. So here temperature becomes Tw2. So we observe that at x equal to L by two, if we directly put the boundary condition in this equation, we can observe that x equal to t by 2, x equal to l by 2, the temperature becomes maximum. So here I am writing another expression t max minus tw. It comes out to be, if we put these two boundary conditions, then it comes out to be qg l square by 2k. Now many cases can be formed here like both the surface have same temperature if one surface is insulated so we can directly put the values in in the equation one this is our equation one so we can directly put value in this equation and we can get it so this is general equation which we have found out and there's also one case if both the surface have different temperatures then if the both surface have different temperatures that is t1 tw1 and tw2 are different if we talk about another case if the temperature is same then we can put the boundary conditions value of x and value of this t and we can find out the required answer for a problem thank you very much for watching this video and my next video will be based on problems on conduction